Can you still make it as a graphic designer? I don't know. Can you? Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of RobertoBlake.com helping you create something awesome today. So today I want to have a quick conversation about whether you can still make it as a graphic designer. I know there are a lot of people that feel a sense of anxiety because of the freelance aka gig economy and things like Fiverr and Upwork and 99designs and all the people who do spec work and there are all these reasons that people have to say that it's either more difficult or harder to be a graphic designer than ever. And I disagree with some of that. I understand where people are coming from. I understand their anxiety, but I think that there's a bigger picture that's being ignored. For, first of all, I have to say this. It has literally never been a better time to be a creative person, period, end of story. That's it. It's never been a better time. Multiple reasons why. Creativity, despite rhetoric and things on social media, is more respected than it's ever been. This is reflected in the fact that in terms of the market, more graphic designers are being hired, more people are graduating from degrees in creative services professions than ever before, recruitment for those fields is up, and the demand in the marketplace has never been higher because creative professionals do everything that sells everything that matters. The logo on the camera that I'm recording on and every other piece of hardware and equipment and every book on this bookshelf, graphic designers had to be hired and deployed to do that. The packaging for all of it, graphic designers. The websites that sell it, web designers, web developers. The ads that then convinced and sucker me into buying it had to be done by advertising people, marketers, copywriters, designers, digital illustrators, vector illustrators, et cetera, et cetera, into infinity. We've also never lived in a greater age of entrepreneurship. And what a lot of people's counterpunch to all of that is that our industry, creative services, graphic design, web design, marketing, all these things are so heavily saturated. I'm going to let you in on a secret. There are currently 7.5 billion people on the planet, and that number is not going down. So guess what? Everything is saturated. There are 7.5 billion people in the world. I guess you'll never be able to compete in that marketplace and find one human being to marry or to live with or to date. So I guess you might as well give up forever alone. Like real, real talk. I think it's the same thing with anybody in any industry that is talking about saturation and all the reasons they can't win. When there is literally, for the most part, if you are a technician, if you are a creative person, if you are of any type of skilled labor service, Things are great for you right now. If you don't have a skilled labor job and you can be replaced by robots or automation, things are very... I think the issue is the competitive landscape regarding the traditional nine to five employment that everyone seeks for stability, at least initially um, in their career and in their life. And I understand that and that's fine, but I also think people aren't positioning well for that because they're taking advice that is a decade outdated. It's no longer enough to just have a portfolio. And I don't think the answer is just social media leverage because I think that's what everyone expects me to say or I don't think the answer is make a YouTube channel. The thing that I talk to actual designers about that they're not doing is they're not identifying the target market of the person they want to hire them. They're not looking at who is the person that I want to hire me and also what is the target market that they sell to, and then how much of my portfolio represents that. Because you see, I'm not just someone who has been a graphic designer in corporate America, has been a freelancer, et cetera, et cetera, worked at an agency. I am now a creative entrepreneur with multiple ventures and a substantial personal brand, and I've scaled it to the point to where I hire freelancers. So I'm now an employer, I'm someone who's in the hiring chair, and I have to hire people to do stuff for me pretty regularly now, and I'm trying to do even more of that because being a solo entrepreneur is really hard, and there are a lot of people like me, and we're looking to hire people all the time. And the problem is that too often, we find people, we look at their portfolio, and there may not be enough that suggest that they do the thing that we need done. There's not enough depth to it. 
there's not enough depth to their portfolio, and there's not a specific segment of their portfolio, whether it's online or a PDF, that specifically appeals to this is exactly what I need done, or this is the type of market that I'm catering to, and that says, oh, great, you can do that for me. There's just not enough of that there. And part of it is because the advice that people get is you should have 10 to 12 pieces of work in your portfolio. That doesn't impress me. And it's not about impressing me. The reason it doesn't impress me is if you have 10 to 12 pieces of work in your portfolio and out of that 10, one or two of them are what I need and someone else has 30 pieces in their portfolio and six or seven of those things are what I need, guess who I hired? It's not someone who had the most impressive overall portfolio. It's someone who has a greater depth or demonstrates a greater depth and experience in exactly what I need to pay for to relieve my pain and anxiety or to sell to my target market, to sell to my customer, to sell to my client, to sell to my audience. You're not showing me that you can deliver on my specific need. So I think that the reason that a lot of graphic designers aren't successful or are worried about the marketplace or are saying that they haven't been employed in six months or a year or what have you is they're not positioned to be hireable because all they have is a good portfolio that either is too niche specific in a place where there may not be a demand among the people they're showing their portfolio to, which means they're targeting the wrong uh, employer or they're targeting the wrong client and demonstrating the not appropriate work to that market or to their buying audience, et cetera, their customer avatar, marketing terms, the that's the real issue. And then the other issue is that even if they're showing a great portfolio, it may not have enough depth in the right area or it may not be presented in an interview that, hey, there's more of this type of work on my website or I can email it to you or the research wasn't done in advance, this is a biggie, the research is not done in advance on what the employer actually wants and then you don't have enough backfill in your portfolio to then tailor your portfolio to the interview with that specific employer. I mean, imagine that you're going out on a date with someone and you are not making them aware of what restaurant you go to, but you wanna surprise them, but you didn't bother to find out if they have certain allergies or certain dietary concerns. What you felt would be, oh, this is a nice surprise and I can wing it and be charismatic, turns into a disaster because of a lack of preparation and a lack of thought for the other person because you were trying to be impressive and you were trying to be fancy. Well, with your portfolio, if you go into an interview saying, well, this is my best work and it's all great, but there's nothing there that speaks to the needs of the client. It shows a lack of empathy and it shows that you weren't prepared for this and that you didn't bother to research them or find out anything about them and understand. It shows a lack of care. So when people are saying they can't make it as a designer or the market's too saturated, it's like you only have to win with the person that you're in front of in the given moment. And if you're trying to use a blanket generic thing to do that instead of getting specific, if you're trying to be scattershot instead of being precise, that's the problem. The micro is the deal. It's that people are opting out of specificity when micro is really where the sweet spot is and what matters emotionally in context and in terms of practicality. Micro matters. It absolutely does. When you are willing on the surface to not necessarily look as good broad scale to be specifically in the moment with the individual needs of someone, it matters to them when you deliver on that. Meaning that if you don't have a generalist quote unquote portfolio that you're using every single time that is amazing and even if when you're getting very specific, you have to use work that you have that is a seven out of 10 instead of a nine out of 10 because the work that you have that's a seven out of 10 is exactly what the client or employer needs and your stuff that's a nine out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 is not what they need at all, you're better off showing them as many pieces that are a six or a seven out of 10 that are exactly what they need instead of trying to dazzle them with the stuff that's a nine out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 and then convince them that you can deliver on the other thing. It's just the truth. You have to be more about them than about yourself. If you can do that, then you have a better chance of being successful. You can, in fact, make it as a designer. The other thing is you have to decide 
what it is that you want to work on. If you're trying to be a graphic designer and do something for which you think like you'll make more money, then the odds are you won't do that as well as trying to figure out how to make the thing that you do very well, that you care the most about as a designer work and figure out how to win there, how to win in that marketplace, how to win with those companies, those employers. Otherwise, you're going to burn out and you're going to be miserable. I know. Corporate killed me. Corporate killed my creativity. Corporate literally had me figuring out how I was going to jump out of a window. Not even joking this time. So... I would suggest that you find a way to make the thing you're passionate about as a creative practical instead of trying to give in to the narrative, mostly probably dictated by friends and family and parents and so on, of go where the money is. No, go where your instincts win, go where your gut wins, go where you feel it's the right cultural context of a company culture that matters and would make sense to you where you're happy to show up every day and then figure out how to extract every dollar out of that situation that is possible. That's how you're going to win. That's how you're going to make it as a graphic designer. Figure out how to win at what you love and what you're good at instead of trying to excuse doing something that makes you the most money that you can quote unquote be okay with. So question of the day, do you feel like you can make it as a graphic designer? Do you feel like it really is a matter of precise execution, knowing what market you can serve best that you're happy to show up to? Or do you really honestly believe that you just have no chance because of oversaturation in the marketplace and because of crowdsourcing platforms and uh, freelancing platforms and you know the global economy? Do you really feel that it's that soul crushing that there's just no chance for someone like you? Or do you feel that it's more likely you haven't figured out the nuance of that yet? Would love some feedback in the comments. I'm also gonna run a poll up here so you can vote if you want to. I'd love to get that data. I'd love to actually do a follow-up video to this um, using your comments and using that poll. So make sure you're hitting those up. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so very much for watching. And don't forget, go out there and create something awesome today. Never been a better time. Take care.